we don't get a whole lot of tornadoes in the state of Michigan in general. We typically average about 15 or so in the entire state, and more of those are downstate than they are up to the north. So it is pretty unusual for up there. Local four on the ground and in the air with a first hand look at the damage from the Gaylor tornado. Plus, Brandon is tracking Sunday morning showers and a cool down for the rest of the week. Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News Today at 6 starts now. Good morning. It's 7 o'clock. I'm Priya Mann. And I'm Grant Herms. Thanks for joining us here this morning. A Local 4 News Today and a Sunday morning. A little muggy out there. Some rain on the way for us. That's right. Again today. I could feel it when I was walking in. For sure. But this is the kind of morning where some rain brings relief. And I'm glad yes. it's happening earlier rather than later. Get out a little later. Yeah. Get out yeah, the, yeah. the nice smell after it rains and everything. The grass just mm -hmm. smells so great. Although taking the dog out, that's a quicker walk. That's a, that's a good wipe off their paws afterwards, Brandon. Oh, for sure. You Time got our shoes. Yeah. Yeah, it's lighter stuff though today and it's pretty spotty. So it looks worse than it is. It feels worse than it is. Kind of muggy to get going. Live look from Belle Isle. We're not far from the Grand Prix. Really looking forward to that. Temperatures have cooled in our north zone down to 48, but we're still 62 at Metro. A little stationary front over the area, so some pockets of slightly cooler air, but most of us middle upper 50s to low 60s. Storm Tracker 4 just showing a little spit and drizzle, very light showers, especially along and north of M59, but over into Harper Woods and the Gross Points getting a little area of drizzle. Southern Ontario as well. Cold fronts, 8, 9 a.m., pushes all of, I should say, most of the moisture out. So we start with a little muggy negative hair cast early on today, but through the day, improving conditions, middle 60s and a little more afternoon sun. So let me just finish this off the afternoon. Much better. I like that, yeah. Brandon. Thank you. <laughs> well, let's get back to the latest on the deadly tornado that tore through Gaylor. The National Weather Service confirms yesterday's tornado was an EF3 with winds of 150 miles an hour. At least two people were killed and 44 others were hurt during the storm. One person remains unaccounted for. State police are confirming that both victims who died were in their 70s and lived in a mobile home park. The National Weather Service says the tornado was on the ground for 20 minutes across nearly 17 miles. Miles. Governor Whitmer has issued a state of emergency for Otsego County as well. And Consumer Energy reports thousands remain without power right now. Saturday afternoon, Lieutenant Governor Garland Gilchrist was in Gaylor to assess the damage. We can now direct resources to people who need them in this community to make sure that we can uh, recover, that we can build, that we can uh, come forward stronger together. One thing that's true about the people of Michigan is that we have each other's back. We've seen people already uh, step up, not just for their family members. We've seen, we're going to see volunteers from every single corner of Michigan are going to come here. And a curfew is in place until later this morning. Meanwhile, the cleanup begins for thousands across the city of Gaylord. Homes and businesses now destroyed by the powerful twister. Tim Pamplin is live in Gaylord for us all morning. And Tim, the community really coming together here to help each other through this tragedy. They really are, Grant. You heard the Lieutenant Governor say that people are coming in from across the state, volunteers to help, and that is much needed. Semi-trailers flipped over, shipping containers just dropped where the winds took them. Of course, with 150 mile an hour winds bowling through here, cars didn't stand a chance. It might sound cliche, but it looks like something out of a movie. Upturned cars, snapped power lines. Absolute devastation as you hop on M32 at I-75 heading through Gaylord. That was an oil chain shop, collapsed as the walls gave way. This is Main Street, but behind me is a mobile home park, and the scene there is simply horrific. Out of the mobile home park, there is probably 95% destruction in there. It was the first community to get hit when the twister touched down Friday evening. And unfortunately, we found another deceased person early this morning, shortly after 1 a.m. in the Nottingham Mobile Home Park. From Drone 4, you can see a couple of investigators down there in their yellow coats searching for more victims. Back in the commercial district, it's time to start the cleanup. Destroyed cars litter the parking lot of the plaza. Over at the Little Caesars, pizza's still sitting in the oven from the day before. Massive rooftop air conditioners blowed off. The roof 
ripped away. We're up here to assess damage, see what support we can provide. Former Troy firefighter Tom Kamek now works for Jarvis Property Restoration. They just want to help any way they can. Just lend support and, and our prayers. Yeah, this community needs a lot of prayers, a lot of help. Absolute devastation. You see the OK on the side of that vehicle means it's been searched, cleared of any victims. But again, back over the Nottingham Estates mobile home park. The search, I'm being told, will continue for the next few days. There is still one person reported missing up here. This is a uh, garage structure out here, a DPW yard just around the corner, completely destroyed. Again, a sun rises here on this Sunday morning. The cleanup is going to go, get underway in earnest. Yesterday, a lot of people up here were just in shock, you know. Uh, Sunday, sun rising, it's time for all hands on deck. Get this place together again. Back to you guys downtown. That, that truck in particular, Tim, is just so harrowing to think that they had to search that and then write OK on the side. You know, Tim, we've seen a lot of the damage in the commercial district right in that main street drag there. But what about the neighborhoods? What have you been seeing? Well, we have been in the neighborhoods. Let me spin around here. Let me show you the path again. So that's heading towards the uh, mobile home park beyond those buildings and those tankers. The uh, hurricane uh, tornado came through here straight through here and then off over that direction. That's 75 over there. Beyond 75 is the neighborhood. Coming up at 8 o'clock, we're going to relocate over there. We'll bring you the scene from the neighborhoods. Back to you guys downtown. All right, Tim, thank you so much. You can stay with Local 4, Local 4 Plus, and click on Detroit this morning. We'll be continuing our coverage of the Gaylord Tornado cleanup all day long. As Tim just said, it'll be live there throughout the morning, and our Nick Monticelli will be in Gaylord live tonight at 6. Time now is 7.07 and to our other top story, a national historic destination in Detroit dealing with devastating damage after a water main break. The Prince Hall Grand Lodge on Gratiot Avenue on the city's east side was in the middle of renovations when water flooded its basement. Here's Megan Woods with more. It was a little disheartening. Rodrick Anderson is the Grand Master here at the most worshipful Prince Hall Grand Lodge and says Friday afternoon he got a call about this. That water also got into their basement. When I finally did get down here, I was like, oh my God, Lord, no, what are you telling me? The city of Detroit's water and sewerage department says it was a water main break. They sent crews Friday to slow the leak and again Saturday to make the repair. Roderick says that's just not enough, especially when a similar situation happened last June. City's equipment, it's just faulty equipment. Uh, the claim that we put in last year, uh, uh, they came back and denied the claim and told us because we could not prove it was their equipment. Which meant they weren't going to get reimbursed for the $125,000 they spent in repairs. So here we are again, year later, and having to, you know, redo the same thing over again. We're hoping that the city is going to come through with this and uh, honor what we know is, is rightfully the right thing to do. And that was Megan Woods reporting for us this morning. The city of Detroit's water and sewerage department says they apologized to surrounding businesses for the inconvenience and in a statement said, unfortunately, water main breaks can cause flooding due to the leak. And in most cases, there is no warning until the leak occurs. DWSD will reach out on Monday to Prince Hall Grand Lodge staff and we will have our engineers assess the water main for possible future rehabilitation. We do have that full statement on clickondetroit.com. And the first shipments of baby formula being sent to the U.S. from Europe arrived at an air base in Germany. White House says 132 pallets of Nestle formula is headed to Plainfield, Indiana. Another 114 pallets of Gerber Good Start Extensive HA formula are set to arrive in the coming days. In total, about 1.5 million 8-ounce bottles of the three formulas will arrive in the U.S. this week. President Biden signed the Access to Baby Formula Act of 2022. This bill allows WIC to waive certain program requirements to buy more types of infant formula. Glad to see that some relief is on the way. Yes, not the only shipment, just the first one. So right. hopefully we get a lot more of those bottles that we need desperately. I mean, I've been reading stories about people driving like hundreds of yeah. miles trying to get some baby formula yeah. for their child. Very scary. Absolutely.